Hi, welcome back to Your Future, Your Finances. Now we're talking with Brittany Stouffer, who is an estate planning attorney and an individual who focuses on gun trusts, which is a very interesting topic. I'm uh, pleased to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, before we get into gun trusts and what they are and, and other estate planning topics, tell us a little bit about your uh, background as an estate attorney. Sure. Um, I uh, really focused on estate planning through school. It was mm -hmm. my favorite topic. And uh, tax planning. Mm -hmm. um, but I grew up around firearms my entire life and basically took it for granted. Mm -hmm. um, so when I graduated, I didn't realize basically how much estate planning and my background in firearms kind of went very nicely together. Yeah, I, I bet because in, in my world, people have all kinds of personal possessions and, and uh, comes up during the estate planning process. Um, so what's, uh, what is a gun trust? A gun trust is really an estate planning tool that I use um, in order to allow our clients to pass down firearms to the next generation. Also, it's a preferable method um, in order to allow people to purchase specific types of regulated firearms. Mm -hmm. So passing down so they may do follow all the rules to get it and properly store it and use it over their lifetime. but giving it to another generation is a completely different uh, Absolutely. ball game. Okay. Is it just a piece of paper or like what do you do once you have a gun trust? Yes, um, you're correct. It's absolutely just a piece of paper, but um, just like any other trust, it's a list of instructions about what to do with your assets during your life, during disability, or at death. Mm -hmm. But gun trusts have specific provisions um, within them so that the client um, and their family and friends are in compliance with state, federal, and local law. Mm -hmm. So do you ever have to represent someone because you drafted the document while they're living? I think you were talking a little bit about that when we met. Right. So an individual um, may become a prohibited person, meaning they can't actually take possession of the firearms. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that they lose their property rights in the firearms. They still own it, but they can't legally actually possess it. So what the gun trust enables an individual to do is um, name a successor trustee to take possession of those firearms while that individual is prohibited um, so that they don't lose those firearms or those assets and they don't end up in the hands of the government. So successor trustee, so they're actually, uh, it's like an entity that owns a gun. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of trusts. There's things like family trusts and uh, all sorts of other names. Can you just work it into a different kind or, or does it need to be a separate document? Um, I advise that we definitely do a separate document because of the separate provisions that we need to include inside of a gun trust to it, in order to protect them. A family gun trust won't have provisions, for instance, for prohibited people mm -hmm. or passing those firearms to the next generation to make sure that those beneficiaries aren't prohibited people. What is a prohibited people? Prohibited person um, would be, for instance, uh, an individual who's a felon, com convicted yeah. of a felony, mm -hmm. a fugitive, somebody who has a protective order against them. Mm -hmm. So if you have an individual gun trust, do you just have one, or is it work for everything, everything that you might own that is within this category of personal possessions? Um, it's for specific types of firearms. So not only do we just have firearms in general as assets, there's actually different categories within firearms. Mm -hmm. So there are federally regulated firearms and um, non-federally regulated firearms or what we call Title I firearms. Mm -hmm. The federally regu regulated firearms are things like machine guns, short-barreled yeah. rifles, short-barreled shotguns, and suppressors. What about like collectibles, collectible guns? Does that work the same way? Um, it works basically the same way. Um, we, because the different types of categories of firearms are regulated differently, um, sometimes we actually recommend that they actually use separate trusts for those separate types of firearms. Mm -hmm. And you have, um, we were talking in, uh, in preparation for this, something called an NFA item. Uh, what's an NFA item? An NFA item is a National Firearms Act item or Title II or Class III item. Um, like I said, the machine guns, short-barreled rifles, or suppressors, they fall under that category, and they're regulated by the federal government. Do you think the average person who owns a firearm knows what title it is or what they need to be doing? Um, I run across different issues or different, um, I guess, uh, backgrounds with mm -hmm. firearms, and um, 
NFA items are becoming more popular nowadays. Um, the idea of suppressing a firearm so that it doesn't make as much noise um, is actually more acceptable and people like it so they can go out and shoot as much as they <laughs> want and, and the noise doesn't disrupt them. Mm -hmm. All right. So once you have this gun trust, what do you do? You, you, uh, you sign it and you activate it in some way? Um, your gun trust or your trust is activated once it's signed, but it's really not effective until it's funded. Um, there's a process in place in which you can um, obtain certain types of firearms, the NFA firearms, for instance, or the Class Three firearms, and um, it needs to be approved by ATF, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Agency. It's a federally regulated agency. They approve your Form 4, and once that form comes back stating that the trust can own that item, mm -hmm. the trust is funded with that item. So they have to approve every single one? Yes, every single, every single one needs to be approved before it can actually be funded into your NFA trust. Okay, and ATF, so that's national organization, so you have to like send it off to them and wait? And yes, you actually send a copy of your trust to the government mm -hmm. and you wait. And you could wait anywhere from three to four months. Now, a few years ago, before um, these items became very popular, it used to take anywhere from six to nine, almost a year, to get approval back from ATF. Mm -hmm. and that's a very different process from having a regular trust, like a living trust. You're not sending that off to the government to be approved or anything. Absolutely not. Yeah. No, no. So, um, all right, good. Uh, well, let's take a break. Let, let's have your website in this segment, and then we'll take a break and talk some more. Um, www.marylandguntrust.com. You can find more out about uh, NFA Trust and about our uh, practice. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. We're going to take a break. Uh, you're watching Your Future, Your Finances.